talk about the Texas State Bobcats. Talk about the Texas State Bobcats. Um, we're going from like, why do we go in this order? You we went from scheduled TCU, it. Or we went from a, I know. We went from A&M, where it's like, we're feeling really good, to TCU, where it's like, okay, you know, we middling, but arrows pointing upward. To... Now we're talking about Texas State. <laughs> Texas State. So let's start start with the, the offensive grade. Uh, I'm going to give the offense a D plus. Uh, D plus, this is an offense that the num. I'll tell you that the numbers are not, I think the numbers do them a little bit more justice than they actually were. Um, they were, they, they scored 27 points a game. That's like 66 in the nation. It's middle of the road. They were 370 yards of total offense. But I think if you dig down, I think that there were bigger problems there that they were able, they were unable to find any sort of consistency. I think part of it is that you never knew who was going to be the guy that they were going to ask to step up each week. Was it going to be Brady McBride? Was it going to be Tyler Vitt? Was it going to be Brock Sturgis? Was it going to be Calvin Hill? Like who were they going to, what was Texas state's offensive identity? Mm -hmm. Uh, Now look, I do think again, this is probably closer to a C minus than a D plus, but their offense plain and simple they were just so all over the place. Like the most consistent guy they had was probably their receiver in Marcel Barbe. Um, this was a guy that, you know, he's probably their most consistent playmaker, but this was a team that, and I think a lot of it started at the quarterback spot, right? The, 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 with Brady McBride. Now part of it was injury. Part of it was just kind of shuffling things around with Tyler Vitt. They were never able to get consistent play under center. And I think that really hamstrung them. Mm-hmm. But for an offense that we kind of expected to take flight in 2020, um, it just never did. The other thing about them is, you know, look, this is a team that was not able to really run the ball very effectively, at least consistently. Um, the offensive line was only okay, and they were just a little bit too loose with the football. Mm-hmm. Like they, they were, they were not very good offensively, or they were not very good in the turnover margin. Um, and so, I give them a D plus. I might give them a C minus if I were rethinking it, but uh, D plus is what I ended up coming up with. Uh, for, I think for you. I'm you can look State. at that for like a tale of two seasons, basically like a tale of two halves, because yeah. in those first couple of games when they were like a point away from winning, you know, it was like yeah. the offense was churning pretty well. And then I don't know if it yeah. was a moral, like a, a mental thing or a morale happened. issue. Like they, they died off in the second half of the season. And then it was like, eh, we're not going to win any of these. Yeah, it was mm. Just, yeah, the, the offense just really kind of kind of lost steam there at the end. Mm-hmm. It, it, there were times where they looked great, and there were other times where they just really, really looked like they didn't want to be out there. Okay, let's go to the defense. Uh, giving them a D minus. I held off. I held off on an F, but I gave them a D minus. Guys, this is a bad defense. This is a real bad defense. Pretty much everywhere you look, if you look at like the just the top line stats of like total offense and scoring offense, it was real bad. If you look at the, if you dig down into it, it was real bad. Here's the problem for them. Okay, here's the two biggest things. One, they could not stop the run, like at all, at all. They were they gave up more than five yards a carry on the season, which is terrible. Okay, they could not stop the run, and if you can't stop the run. That's usually bad, but you can make up for it if you make those splash plays, if you get sacks, if you get interceptions and stuff like that. And they just flat out didn't. Like, they just Mm -hmm. didn't. They were 97th in the nation in interception rate. They were 123rd in sack rate. 123rd. Miserable. Miserable. They did, they like, it's one, if you're going to be Ben, don't break, that's fine. But you've got to make plays at some point. Mm-hmm. And they just didn't. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the biggest thing. They just didn't make those plays. So they get a D- minus from me on the defensive side. Um, my all- team MVP is going to be Marcel Barbie, uh, mm-hmm. the, the, the wide receiver who was, again, their most consistent threat. 40 catches, 584 yards, 10 touchdowns. Uh, he had, more, uh, he had uh, twice as many uh, touchdowns as any other player on the team. Uh, he was their most consistent threat. And a guy that I think certainly deserving of being their team MVP, uh, Marcel Barbie gets my gets my nod for for that. Okay, so let's talk about next year. Next year, um, I will say this: if you want to be bullish, if you want to say, well, the offense is really young and they've got everybody coming back, like you're right, right? 
they're going to kind of run it back. And that was one of the things that, like, it, it's become apparent. And, and, by the way, go listen to Republic of Football. They do a great deep dive on Texas State kind of going forward and what the the, uh, um, the direction of the program is. Um, I would love to really I, – I would love to talk to Jake Spavital over a beer and and get the truth of the matter on basically, like, how did they treat the 2020 season? Because I think what he did – they are losing a very, very, very few amount of players. Mm-hmm. And I think he went to the guy, to his guys and said, look, you're all getting an extra year of eligibility. Mm-hmm. Let's just run it back. Let's use this as basically like extra practice time. I hate to say that, but true. That's why they did not sign. If you, if you saw on, on signing day, they did not sign a single high school player. Yeah. Texas State mm-hmm. did not sign a single high school player. Okay. They got some transfers coming in. They did not sign a single high school player. And I think what Spavital is banking on is I like the guys I have on campus, but they've got to, they've got to grow up. Like if this is a risk, you know what I mean? This is a risk and it's going to be really fascinating to see what comes up because a lot of their production is coming back, right? A lot of the guys are coming back, you know, they're going to be pretty well loaded offensively and it's, and the defense while not great, does was pretty young and brings back a lot of those guys. So the question now becomes, can they put it all together and will that extra year make like make it count? Like will that will the extra year lead to growth? That's the big question. Texas State is kind of treating this is a weird comparison, but they're kind of treating 2020 like Houston, I think, tried to treat 2019. Yeah, right? the tanking. Where Houston, <laughs> I, with well, the tanking, so to speak, yeah, <laughs> with Dear King redshirting mm-hmm. in the middle of the season and things like that, like all those players kind of redshirting. I think that Dana Holgerson was like, let's run this back next year, right? Let's run, let's get reinforcements, let's run this back next year. Mm-hmm. That obviously didn't work out for Houston, although they haven't had a normal year since Dana Holgerson has, has arrived on campus. So let's give them a little bit of time. Texas State is, tr- I think, is using. What uh, COVID and using this 2020 season, which is so strange, and the extra year of eligibility for everybody, and say, let's run it back. Let's try it again. Let's just get a year older and a year more experienced and try it again next year. But just it's how, bold. It's interesting. How long does this go? Like, does it go until Spav gets fired, or does it go till it eventually starts working that you don't? You don't sign any high school players. I mean, clearly he keeps bringing in these transfers. I think this is a. I think this is a. I think this is a one year thing. I think this is a. I think this is a, for the most part a one year thing. I mean, obviously he loaded up on JUCO guys last year. He hasn't recruited a ton of high school guys. I feel like he's been doing it state. though. Uh, what What I will say, I think, and again, I'm not trying to speak for Jake Spavital. He's got to answer for his own program. I think he sees the state of the program. And I think he wants to get old quickly. That has was always that was one of his things he wanted to do when he got there. He wanted to get old quickly. Well, now he's got this kind of free pass, and to do that with the extra year because of the COVID nineteen pandemic, that to me represents an opportunity for him to say, "All right, we just we just we 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 just jumped ahead in our progression of what we wanted to do." Let's just let's like let's make the whole plane out of the strategy, mm-hmm. right? Let's go whole hog. Just everybody stay. We've got our guys. We're just gonna get a year older. We're we're gonna close ranks and run it back next year. That's a bold strategy. It, it, mm-hmm. It's it's it, it and it may not work. And if it doesn't work, he's probably paying for it with his job, right? Probably not in 2021. Mm-hmm. But if they have a bad 2021 and they have a bad 2022, they're probably pulling the pulling the ripcord. I am I'm very interested in Texas State next year. They're a really high variance team, and we're going to see how the strategy pays off for Jake Spavital and, going forward. And I for mean, Texas State. So. don't get me wrong. I would love to be proved wrong on this. Absolutely love to be proved wrong on it. But I'm mm-hmm. just still so in the mindset of seeing some of these guys that are getting passed up, like ELM. You've got Andrew Body, and it's like, why are why are you not? But you know what? Another thing about that too is the person who is offering those guys is Jeff, Jeff Trailer. So if we see UTSA start making sure. moves with that, maybe we start to see a little bit different. We'll get we get one of each side here. So I would love to be proven wrong, yeah. but 
I'm it's, not it's, super it's hot really Texas State. <laughs> Texas State. Texas State, I think, is is probably heading into 2021. I think they're the most interesting team in the state. Yeah. Um, and I'm really intrigued to see where they go from there. So there you go. There's a post-mortem report on the Texas State podcast. 